So I spent 25 years making a zoo in Planet Zoo, but there's a catch. This is only the first of the four videos for this zoo. Each one is going to be 25 years building up this zoo, all leading to the point of having a 100 year zoo. So let's get into it. When I opened this zoo, I first went about moving the starting electricity points further away from each other to spread out the electricity. Also, thank you to the person who commented this in my last video. I genuinely had no clue you could do that. But after I had that set up, I made a path to what will be the first shopping area. Also, a big difference from this zoo compared to ones I've previously done is that I actually have a planned map for this one. I normally just fly by the seat of my pants, but I figured if I was going to spend a hundred years making this zoo, I was going to need a more comprehensive plan. However, I'm using the planned layout of the zoo as more of a loose guideline, rather than a hard set of rules so that I can still make some on-the-fly decisions as need be. And after I had the shop area worked up, I needed to set up my first staff area. And to do that, I mapped out the first habitat by sinking the terrain so that I had a guideline for the paths. And then I threw all the staff buildings down. I also remembered to connect the paths this time. And with all the basics set up, I finally started working on the first habitat, which is going to be for the American bison. I added their water area, had the bison put in, and then made the barrier out of wood in the back and glass at the front. Added a handful of trees and then made them a shelter before messing around with the barrier a bit more because I really wasn't liking how the glass was looking. I added their enrichment and then threw rocks along the back of the habitat and sunk some bushes into them to look like moss. I added more rocks and other greenery around the habitat, but American bison have a really low coverage, so I didn't get far before exceeding it. So I worked on their terrain and added bushes around the habitat edge, along with other decorations around both the habitat and the shop area. And then I went back to the bison habitat to add more rocks because I thought it was looking rather plain. It's also here that I decided to ignore the coverage limit and just have fun with it. I added plants into the rocks along the barrier, and I even threw some broken branches around before adding ivy along the edge of the viewing areas because I thought it looked cool. And after adding more rocks around, this habitat was finished. And this is where I decided to deviate from my original plans just a little bit by adding an exhibit at the starting area. I decided to do this because I wasn't making money nearly as fast as I wanted to be, and exhibit animals are always a good way to boost the money-making process. So I added these fun-looking poison frogs to my zoo, gave them some donation bins and an education speaker, and after about three years, my financial situation was looking a lot better. And I was ready to add the next habitat, which was going to be the tapirs. I sunk an area, threw up null barriers, and had them placed in the soon-to-be habitat. And knowing I was going to be covering up most of the barrier anyway, I settled for using the chain-link fencing before surrounding it with an elevated path along one side and what was supposed to be staff path on the other, but I mistook this red brick path for the staff path I meant to use and I didn't notice it for quite some time. But wrong path aside, I added one of the new viewing dome entrance thingies to the barrier and added two viewing domes into the habitat. And then I shaped the water around the viewing domes and added the enrichment items. I made them two shelters, which were really just two floating slabs of rock that I added trees under to give the illusion that they weren't just floating there. But honestly, making custom shelters is just one of my weak points, so I wing it like every time. And sometimes it looks decent, but other times I just cover the mess with trees and bushes and hope no one notices. I added some trees around and then put an unnecessary amount of plants into and around the water. I also went about covering the underside of the elevated path with some bushes. And after that was covered, I added bushes anywhere that I thought was looking rather plain. I finished off the plants with some leaf piles along the edge of bushes, and then it was time for the part that wraps everything together. Rocks. So many rocks. Rocks around any edge not covered with plants, rocks along the edge of the fencing, and rocks along the water. And after adding education speakers and donation bins, this habitat was finished. And it's worth mentioning that the most time will pass in between habitat building, while I'm letting the game run to collect money and to see if the zoo is functioning properly, seeing as it's rather difficult to let the game run and build stuff. But with that being said, I didn't wait long before jumping into the next habitat, which was going to be for the grizzly bears. 
I started with extending the path from the tapir habitat to where I wanted the grizzly bear habitat to be. And much like the other ones, I sunk the ground to map out the location before adding null barriers and adding the grizzly bears. I already had an idea of what I wanted to do with this habitat, so I lined the back with rocks before going in with different shades of rocks to add some variation in color. And I landed on using a concrete barrier along the front of the habitat where I didn't add rocks. I added some water, which I then made a waterfall above before sprinkling some trees around to get an idea of the layout I wanted, and then sinking bushes into the rocks to give a fun look to the background. And after that I pulled out some bushes and flowers to decorate the middle of the habitat along with the edges. I added tall bushes along the barrier under the raised path, and I really liked these bushes so I also sunk them into the rocks to add some depth and to cover up the waterfall section a little bit. And then it was time to work on the terrain. And what I've been doing here recently is adding long grass in areas I don't think the animals would wear down, and short grass in somewhat traveled areas and soil in the most traveled areas. And at this point I realized that I hadn't added any shelters yet, so I pulled out the same stone I used for the tapirs, added stone supports on the bottom, and blended it in with the rock wall a little bit. After which I gave them bedding, added their feeders, and gave them their enrichment items including this neat rock climbing thing that I added to the corner, and then it was rock time. I added some around the climbing structure along the edge and in the water, and after watching this bear scratch his back, which was very cute, I added the education speakers and donation bins. And after the grizzly bear habitat, I let the game run until year 10, and here's a recap of what happened in that time. My bison started maturing. I got an inspector report and everything was looking real good. Except for the fact that all my guests were apparently very stupid. The tapirs had a baby at some point. Janet the grizzly bear learned how to tap dance. Janet also had babies. Let's hope they are also tap dancing prodigies. The tapir baby matured so I put her in a box and sold her for profit. And by year 10 I had more than enough money to start building a house. A reptile house to be specific. And I won't lie, I had no idea what I was doing. Well, that's kind of a lie. I had the basic concept in my head of how this was going to be put together, but I've never tried making something like this in Planet Zoo before, so it was a lot of throwing stuff together and making it work. I started with making the basic foundation, along with setting up the shopping area that is going to sit just outside the reptile house. But that's a completely different work zone in my plan, so I don't end up setting that up quite yet. I do, however, set up a souvenir shop and an information center before adding all the exhibits I wanted, 10 in total. And before I added the walls, I put in the exhibit animals I could currently get my hands on. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to put a list on screen for you. I added donation bins and education boards before adding walls and a roof, both of which I'm probably not going to show much of the process for, mainly because I had no clue what I was doing, but I think it turned out somewhat decent in the end. Last minute, I added this fun sky roof bit that I had a tree coming out of that I really liked the look of. And I even added fencing along the top to pull it together more. And that's pretty much where I left this building for now. It's not finished, I definitely have some more ideas as to what I want to add to it. But at this point, I had worked on it for so long, I figured I would move on for now and come back to it another time. I moved along to working on another habitat and we're playing with big cats for this one. I lowered the train for what is going to be the Bengal tiger habitat, but before I could get very far, I needed to visit my cheetah zoo because I didn't have the conservation credits I needed to buy the tigers. That didn't take long though, and in no time I had a set of Bengal tigers added to the habitat. I set up a wood barrier before adding water to the habitat, and then I covered the wooden barrier with rocks and added a viewing dome to the side, which I also covered with rocks, and then I covered those rocks with bamboo. But messy barrier set up aside, I started adding the greenery to the habitat, focusing first around the water to get the general layout of that down. I also made the shelter part and integrated that into the greenery because I like how that's been working for me so far. I added some smaller, more colorful plants around in clusters to finish off the greenery. And some parts of the habitat were still really bare at this point, so I went in with some rocks to fill those areas out. After which I added their enrichment items, set up education speakers, and placed down donation bins. This is also where I finally noticed that the staff path I put down earlier wasn't a staff path, and fixed it after like seven years. Also, all the guests were crowding this one area that was clearly blocked by rocks and plants, and then complaining that they couldn't get a good view. 
but grouchy guests aside, I didn't wait long before jumping into the next habitat, which was going to be a combined habitat for the greater flamingo and the Indian peafowl. So I made a large rectangular hedge barrier with a zagging path going from one end to the other before adding the second staff area to the zoo and having them throw in a bunch of flamingos and peafowl. The first thing I did was add the water, seeing as flamingos like to swim, and I wanted to make sure I had that need met before anything else. I also wanted to add the heart shelters before too much else, but for the life of me, I couldn't settle on a design I was happy with. So I moved it to the side for now and went about adding the enrichment items. I threw down the donation bins and education speakers because people were already entering the habitat, so I figured I'd do that now instead of saving it for the end. And I changed the path to something more suitable for a walkthrough habitat. And finally made my way back to the hard shelter, where I actually managed to make something actually rather nice looking in my opinion. And with all those needs met, I was finally ready to pull out the foliage. I started with adding trees to fill out large sections of area that I wanted to be covered. I added some blue lotus plants to the water before working on the terrain. And then to tie it all together, I pulled out the rocks, placing most of them in front of and behind the watering area. And after scattering more small plants around, that was a wrap for the greater flamingo and Indian peafowl habitat. I finished this habitat close to the end of year 14, and my plan was to let it run until year 20, to both build up money and to make sure that my zoo was functioning properly and that there weren't any major issues I needed to fix. Everything was running somewhat smoothly. The flamingos were a little stressed, but I was expecting that. And they seemed to be fixing the issue themselves by running to the shelter, so I wasn't worried about it and left it for now. Some of the peafowls were starting to have babies, and one of them had an albino baby, which I thought was very neat. I also remembered at this point that there is a research mechanic in this game, so I got that going. And I ended up having to add one-way glass barriers to the front of the water areas because the flamingos were getting stressed out while swimming. And at first I only did it to one, but I did eventually add another barrier to the other watering area. I also added another shelter to the habitat so that they had a closer place to run to if they were stressed. There was also an issue where some of them would still be hungry even after just being fed. And I honestly couldn't figure out a fix to the issue other than deleting some of the food enrichment I had down and adding more normal feeding trays. And that kind of worked, but I was still having to send some of them to quarantine every so often so they wouldn't starve. I think that might just be something that happens when you have so many animals in one habitat. But eventually your 20 rolled around, and for the most part, the bigger issues within the zoo were sorted out. And with all that handled, I was ready to make a habitat for the Chinese pangolins. To start this habitat, I used the soil terrain to mark out a small circle. I used a wooden barrier for the back of the habitat and a chain link barrier for the front half of the habitat. I then connected the habitat to the main path along with the staff path in the back. I started with giving them a very shallow water area before setting up all the enrichment items towards the front of the habitat and then making them a shelter of terracotta, which I also made at the front of the habitat. And I left everything at the front so that I could fill the back of the habitat with trees, bushes, and other foliage. Because the penguins are so tiny, I didn't want to cover up any of the front section. By the way, I found these really big and fluffy bushes, and they're probably my new favorite thing in this game. Second to rocks, of course, but they were really fun to add to this habitat. And while I said I didn't want to cover the front of the habitat with any vegetation, rocks are fair game. So I fixed the terrain to their liking, which consisted mostly of soil before pulling out my rocks. I added rocks along the water and the barrier edge before pulling out some green bits to add something a little extra to the rocks. And finishing off the habitat by adding plants to the water and setting up education speakers and donation bins around the habitat. But the guests weren't really making their way over to the new habitat, so I added some vending machines around for incentive. And that seemed to work because they were slowly making their way over. Well, some of them were making it as far as getting their food and drinks and then turning right back around, but that's fine. And I know I said this habitat was done, but as a final thought, I did attach a viewing dome thing because I thought the habitat needed it. But that's actually it for this habitat. I didn't add more after that. I spent some time in between this habitat and the next, adding benches, trash cans, and another set of bathrooms. And this set of bathrooms isn't technically on my layout of the zoo, but the guests were complaining about needing the restroom, so I went ahead and gave them one. But after all that was handled, I hopped into making the last habitat for this video, the African Buffalo.
which is going to sit in between the peafowl slash flamingo habitat and the Chinese pangolin habitat. I sunk the train and threw up a wooden barrier with thick glass in the front. And then I tried making the water area because African buffalo enjoy water, and I wanted to have that down first so I could shape the rest of the habitat around it with the viewing areas in mind. But I was really struggling to make it look nice. So I switched focus to make everything more accessible through the staff paths and having them bring the African buffalo to the habitat. And with them in there for size reference, I was able to get a body of water that I was actually happy with. I laid a couple of trees around and then added rocks around the back of the water. And I briefly debated removing the barrier from behind the rocks before ultimately deciding that it looked better with the barrier there. I finished with adding the rocks and then decorated the water before giving them bedding underneath the shade of some trees and adding their enrichment items. I also changed the thick glass to one-way glass because the buffalo were getting stressed. But then I had to reload the game because I don't think it registered that I had changed the barrier to one-way glass because the buffalo just kept getting stressed. But they were fine after I reloaded the game. Also, I took a brief break from making this habitat because a bunch of peafowl were maturing. And I don't think I've mentioned it yet, but when I was recording this, there was an event going on where every other animal you released would either get a free animal or a set of clothes for your avatar. And I got so many free gold star animals from this event. But free stuff aside, I went back to making the buffalo habitat and started by adding the background greenery. Starting with spreading this grass around the back of the habitat and where I added bedding. And then I threw flowers and these really big bushes into the mix. Along with some smaller bushes that I also sunk into the rocks. Speaking of rocks, I added another small cluster in front of the water and a long patch of rocks in front of the viewing glass. Added the education speakers and the donation bins and this habitat was a wrap. But don't worry, there are still four more years to go so this video isn't over yet. I was still having an issue with litter gathering along the path despite having added a lot more bins. So I hired seven more caretakers, assigned two of them to work zone two and the rest to work zone one. And with them hired and hopefully handling the litter situation, I added decorations around each habitat. Starting with the peafowl slash flamingo habitat, I found these really cute flamingo statues. And then I added two peafowl statues next to them at both the entrance and the exit of the habitat. And unfortunately, there weren't any African buffalo decorations, so they didn't get anything fun for their habitat. But there were these statues of the Chinese pangolin that made him look like he was politely asking for your attention. So I scattered a couple of them around the pangolin habitat, and then I moved on to the grizzly bear. And there weren't technically any grizzly bear decorations specifically. But I did make this really stupid and funny looking bear holding a bear face with an arrow pointing to the bears. And I just really like how goofy it looks. I added the Bengal tiger decorations next. And at first I added this big tiger head which looked really fun above the dome entrance. And I was really tempted to leave it but it was specifically labeled Indian tiger arch. And it looked really cool but it just didn't fit the theme of the area so I took it down and put up this instead. Also, you might notice that I didn't do any decorations for the reptiles, and that's because my plan is to do them when I properly decorate the whole zoo, or at least this area of the zoo, and not while I'm just adding decorations to the habitats. Mainly because the reptile house is so big that I want it to match with whatever I do for the surrounding area so it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. But after I finished that, a ton more peafowl had matured, which meant I could claim even more rewards. And then on a much sadder note, one of the grizzly bears passed away. So I set up the memorial on a nearby bench. And not long after that, a bison passed away. And honestly, I'm gonna stop mentioning every animal that passes away because most of them did. Which is to be expected because it's nearly been 25 years. And that's like the average life expectancy of most animals. I like stumbled over expectancy there, but I'm not doing another take but I did set up a memorial for each animal on a bench by the corresponding habitat. But in between all the animals dying, I caught these hooligans in the act of vandalizing this trash can. So I had them kicked out, but I did take note of why they were so angry, which initially I didn't understand because they were right next to the drinks and food. But after thinking about it for a second, I remembered that if, if it's too busy, they won't even bother trying to get anything. So I deleted some of the buildings and made a new setup with a whole lot more shops. And it became rather busy, so I think the guests were pleased with the expansion. I added animal talks in front of each habitat to boost the education rating for the zoo. 
I also used this time to get the b-roll footage that I use when I don't know what else to show on screen. And by the time I was done with all of that, it was the start of year 25. And I didn't do much for this last year. However, most of the animal research was wrapping up, so that was nice. I spent most of this last year babysitting the flamingos and peafowls, adding memorials to benches, and cashing in all the rewards I earned from releasing animals. But by the time the year was almost finished, there wasn't any more litter on the ground or vandalized objects. And when I checked the guest needs tab, most of the people were green with a sparse amount of yellow and red mixed in. Overall, a great way to end this video and an even better way to start the next. So this is the second video in this four-part series where I spend 25 years building up this zoo, all leading to having a 100-year zoo. So let's get into it. Since I spent time in the last 25 years zoo video, making sure everything was running smoothly in the zoo, I was able to jump right into making the next habitat, which is going to be for the bacterian camel. I started by checking the minimum size I needed to make this habitat, and then proceeded to mark out a much bigger area than I really needed using sand. Then using the rough and train tool to make a hilly area in the back, I made a null barrier that I then shrunk after realizing just how much extra room there was before having them deliver the camels to the habitat. And when I was checking their requirements, I realized they wanted a good amount of rock terrain, so I covered the terrain that I had raised in the back with rock. And then I didn't really like how rocky it looked, so I diluted it a little with some short grass before throwing sand everywhere and finishing off their terrain needs. I worked on the barrier next, starting off with setting up a chain link fence along the back before trying to make this custom shelter slash petting zoo situation. Yeah, I don't really know what my thought process was, and I think for obvious reasons I ended up deleting it all and starting over with whatever this was, before coming to my senses and making the barrier wood with glass at the front. And with a barrier set up, I added in a water source and pulled out some rocks to line the back with throwing in some red desert rocks for an interesting splash of color, after which I pulled out the plants, and my plan for this habitat was to keep it somewhat sparse when it comes to greenery, so I focused most of the trees around the water like a little oasis kind of, also sinking some into the rocks to add a little bit more to that area, and then I added a couple bushes around the trees before sinking some into the rocks. I sprinkled some aloe vera plants around for a pop of color in the greenery, along with these big purple bushes focused mostly around the water. And after I had the plants added, I pulled out the bedding and added some to the back and front of the habitat. I added the enrichment before deciding to redo the terrain because I really wasn't happy with how it was looking. And I ended up leaving out the short grass and just adding rock and soil to the back, and I think it looked quite a bit nicer. And with that looking how I wanted it to, it was time to pull out the rocks. I started by placing large rocks before adding smaller clusters of rocks around those. And after placing many small rocks and then some big rocks and then duplicating clusters of rocks to add even more, I had spent, and this is no joke, I spent 30 minutes placing these rocks and I really wasn't even that happy with how they looked. This was supposed to look like a rocky hill area and I just don't think it gives the vibe I wanted it to. And since my tried and true method of covering anything I don't like the look of in rocks wasn't going to work in this situation, I pulled out some plants instead. I scattered a couple more trees around before pulling out these grass bits that I sunk into the rocks with the hopes that it would make them look better. I even pulled out this fluffy bush that I also sunk into the rocks. And after adding all that, I was actually a lot happier with how this area looked and decided to call this habitat finished. So I placed education speakers and donation bins, and that was this habitat officially done. I busied myself with making the next shopping area, which I also placed a zoo entrance at in the hopes that guests would enter the zoo from this point, so that less guests would need to walk through the flamingo slash peafowl habitat to get to this end of the zoo. But after that was all set up, I collected all the African savanna elephants I had earned from the event in the last 25 year zoo video. And I also finally set up the shopping area that sits just outside the reptile house. Because in my plan, there's a path that connects these two areas. I set up the staff area for this new work zone and hired the staff that will be working in this area. I started with working on the barrier that I changed about 20 times before landing on something that would at least serve its purpose. And it also kind of looked like a giant boot, and I really liked that. So in the elephants went, and it was time to work on adding all the necessities. I started with giving them a rather large watering area. And then I went to work on adding the shelter, but I realized that some of the shelter needs were already covered. 
So I looked and found that underneath the elevated path counted as shelter to these guys. So I got rid of some of the path supports to make more room under the path and the shelter was finished. I pulled out the enrichment items, making sure to scatter them along the whole length of the habitat before going back to the path shelter to add the necessary bedding. I worked on the terrain next, and after I was done with it, this elephant tried to make a great escape. But I put a quick stop to that by moving her further back and ultimately just changing the barrier to brick. After which I pulled out the plants and scattered some trees around the habitat before throwing some grass into the water. And I still thought the water looked weirdly plain, so I sunk some trees into the ground to fill it out some more. I then pulled out more plants to scatter along the barrier to cover it up some, since I really wasn't a big fan of the brick barrier, but there wasn't really any better options. So covering it up was the next best thing. And I was adding some plants around the water when I noticed this elephant doing something funky. So I watched him for a minute before going back to adding foliage to the habitat. I scattered some flowers and other small plants around before pulling out some bushes to help fill out the areas that looked a little too plain. And with all that added, it was rock time. I added some rocks around the bottom of the mud pole enrichment things so that they didn't look like they were just floating there before adding some smaller ones around the tree. And I thought for a second that a pile of rocks in the middle would look nice, but I quickly changed my mind and deleted it all. And this is where I finally decided to work smarter, not harder, and just copied a cluster of rocks to scatter around. And after adding some rocks to the bottom of the water, this habitat was finished. I let the game run for about a year, in which time I remembered that I hadn't added education speakers or donation bins for the elephants. And after that was added, one of the American bison passed away. So I set up a memorial on a bench outside the habitat before spending some time just watching the elephants. I didn't get to watch them for long though because the other animals were having what felt like constant issues. And then my game went offline and I had to relog. And when I relogged, I decided that I should add a keeper hut much closer to the habitats so that the keepers didn't need to run as far. And hopefully I would stop getting notifications for habitats needing keepers. And speaking of habitats, I was ready to start the next one. So I lowered the terrain where I wanted the habitat to be and laid down a null barrier to see if the size was right. And after deciding that it was, I changed the null barrier to wood in the back and glass in the front, before finally introducing both the common ostrich and the common warthog into the habitat. And after they had all arrived at the habitat, I went ahead and set up the education speakers and donation bins, before going back into the habitat to add the water. And this is where I noticed my game was lagging a bit. And my fix for that was to turn the maximum number of guests down, and before you go thinking that's a good idea, I'm going to explain to you why it isn't. I figured that this was in the game for lag management, and that the game would make up for the lack of guests by giving them each more money to spend to balance it out. That's not what happened, I was definitely wrong. And you'll see after I make this habitat, I spend a good chunk of time really confused about why my finances were plummeting. I think the guest limiter is actually in the game for people who play sandbox mode. I probably should have looked it up before playing with the setting, but now you can make better decisions than me. Now let's get back to the ostriches and warthogs. I added the enrichment items into the habitat before pulling out the terrain tool and making the front part of the habitat rock and the back half a mixture of grass and soil, after which I pulled out some rocks to make a shelter in the back corner. And I made the wall of the shelter one-way glass with rock supports around it, and then it was time to add rocks to the rest of the habitat. I started with this cluster of rocks in the middle that I copied so that I could paste it around the top of the shelter, along with pretty much everywhere else in the habitat, mostly focused around the front viewing area. And after the rocks were in place, I pulled out some trees to cover up the shelter, because to be honest, I wasn't all that happy with how it looked. But if I can't see it, it's not an issue. I also noticed at this point that I didn't add rocks to the water, so I went ahead and did that before scattering other plants around the water as well. And I decided at this point that I wanted a little greenery mixed in with the rocks, so I found this elephant grass that after sinking into the ground was exactly what I was looking for. I added bedding to the shelter and this habitat was done. Well, it was almost done. I had to change the glass at the front to one-way glass because the ostriches were getting stressed. But I liked the look of the thick glass because it had a nice detailing along the top. So I replicated that with some wood logs along the top, and now this habitat was actually finished. And with just three new habitats, my zoo was taking up a lot more space, and I was pretty happy about it. 
What I wasn't happy about, though, was all the litter, so I tracked down a caretaker and moved them to the problem areas to sort it out. I also had more American bison brought to the bison habitat because the rest of them had died and it was just the male left. And he was lonely without more bison to keep him company. I added more one-way glass around the flamingo habitat because the amount of stressed flamingo notifications I was getting was constant. And this is where I first noticed that my finances were plummeting. And I thought that maybe the unhappy guests were a contributing factor to my less than stellar income rate. So I went about placing coolers where large crowds were gathering. I also noticed that no guests were going into the restaurants I placed. And then I realized that I'm a dingus who didn't attach any tables to the restaurants. So I made a very messy and temporary fix to that issue. Before deciding to up all of the shop prices by a dollar to try and earn more money. Because at this point I still hadn't realized why I was so broke. And then finally, at the start of year 30, I realized that the reason I wasn't gaining money was because of the guest limit. So I brought it up to 8,000 and let my game run for about a year. And with the issue of money solved, I was very ready and very excited to jump into making the West African lion habitat. But not before a quick visit to my cheetah zoo so that I had the conservation credits to actually buy said lions. Like most of the habitats in this video, I started with a null barrier to get an idea of how large the barrier is before changing it to something else. In this case, I changed it to a wood barrier with glass after which I had the lions added, which is also like most of the other habitats in this video. And this is where I found my new favorite tab in this game, the View Genealogy tab, where I learned that this lion had siblings that were leucistic which means they're white with blue eyes. So I checked some of my other lions and learned that all but two of them had some relation to a lion with the leucistic trait. So I was really excited to see if maybe they would have some leucistic babies, but there's not much they can do without a finished habitat. So I pulled out some rocks, which I lined around the viewing area, which is going to act as both shade for the guests and a shelter for the lions. I added some logs as support so the rocks didn't look like they were just floating there. After which I added the bedding and gave them a climbing structure in the middle of the habitat along with their other enrichment items before adding a water spot in the back of the habitat. And it was at this point that I went back to the elephant habitat to copy a cluster of rocks, which I scattered along the top of the rock shelter because I thought it looked rather flat. I then fixed up their terrain before adding trees and other greenery around the habitat, keeping the greenery focused mostly around the back of the habitat, around the water. I added the education speakers and donation bins before adding more rocks around the habitat, mostly around the water and some around this really big tree that I added because I really liked the look of it. And that was the West African lion habitat done. I let some time pass between this habitat and the next, in which time the only real thing of note was that one of the lions had babies. But let's move on from that and start the next habitat, which is going to be for the Gemsbach. And this time I didn't start with a null barrier. Instead, I started with chain link and changed it to wood when I remembered how much I don't like the chain link barrier. I only tried using it because I realized that most of the habitats in this zoo are made with the wood barrier, but honestly, I just think it's the best looking barrier in the game. I also spent forever trying to get the window segments to look as long and as even as possible so it wasn't made up of a bunch of short segments. And after redoing it like seven times, I got it to a point where I was at least satisfied with how it looked and had the first Gemsbach introduced into the habitat. And I set up a shelter using the back corner of the habitat, after which I added a water pit and threw some bedding into the shelter. I set up all the enrichment items in the habitat before pulling out the plants, specifically the trees. And they had a surprisingly limited amount of acceptable trees, which really didn't work in my favor, seeing as I wanted to sink them into the ground to line the back of the habitat. But luckily enough, I found a rather tall bush that would work in place of a tree. And it was also purple, which I thought really added some fun color to this habitat. I scattered some other greenery around the habitat before moving to the side and making a cluster of desert rocks, which I made a copy of next to the other cluster of rocks I saved for future use. I took the rock cluster and added a lot to the water and a few patches elsewhere in the habitat before making the terrain more suitable for the Gemsbach which consisted mostly of sand. And after that was done, I added the education speakers and donation bins, and that was a wrap for the Gemsbach habitat. 
I decided to let some time pass before I jumped into making the next habitat because I had been breezing through setting up habitats and there were only four more I wanted to add in this 25 year segment. So I figured I would take a break and let some time pass to enjoy watching the new animals and maintaining the zoo. Nothing of real note happened for a while, so I spent some time making sure every animal was being researched. And I also watched these flamingos all eating at the same time, which was very amusing. Also, one of the lions had a leucistic baby, which I was very excited about. He didn't look very excited though, but I certainly was. I also decided to rename him to King, because I just thought that was a fitting name. I also set up a new work zone for the security guards in the hopes that having them patrol smaller areas would help with crime in the zoo. And I figured it was about time to start making the staff and shop buildings look better. So I chose a set of walls and roof pieces that I liked together. And the only buildings that I didn't use the same wall and roof combo for were the zoo entrance and the restaurants outside the ostrich slash warthog habitat. Eventually all the buildings were renovated and I was really happy with the look of the zoo so far. But to really start making it look nice, I pulled out some trees and sparsely added a couple around. I didn't really want to add all the trees at this point because I wanted to be properly finished with this area and work zone before I completed the decorations. And I really wasn't ready to commit to that yet. What I was ready to commit to though was starting the next habitat, which is going to be for the Formosan black bear. I started by sinking the area I wanted to make the habitat and adding a chain link barrier around it before changing it to wood with thick glass for the viewing area. I added the bears and gave them a water area. I added their enrichment and gave them this neat climbing structure. I threw around a couple trees before trying to make the shelter. And I had the idea to incorporate the climbing structure into the shelter, but I quickly ditched the idea because it just really wasn't turning out how I imagined. So after moving the climbing structure, I finished the shelter and added bedding. And when I pulled up the tree tab, I noticed the cherry blossoms and of course, I took the opportunity to use them. I also decided that I had utilized covering up the back of the habitat with a ludicrous amount of foliage nearly enough. So I got to work doing that along with adding greenery to the water. And I really just went for it with adding stuff everywhere. I added stuff along the climbing area and along the barrier. I found these big colorful things that I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the name of, but I hadn't used them before and I wasn't gonna squander the opportunity. I also used the big fluffy bushes to cover up areas I thought were a little too plain and needed more color. I made the train to the bear's liking and added education speakers and donation bins. And that was a wrap for this habitat, or at least it was for now. I forgot to add something very important that I'll be back to add later. And this is the point where I decided to turn on contraceptives for some of the animals because it was becoming a real chore to keep up with the constant baby maturing. And I was starting to miss some, which was leading to fighting. So I turned on contraceptives for the flamingos, peafowl, gemsbok, warthog, and ostrich. And after that, the game was so much more peaceful, and I was ready to start the next habitat, which was going to be for the snow leopards. And this zoo probably isn't the environment to put them in, but who's gonna stop me? I set up a rather small habitat with a wood barrier and changed the front part to one-way glass. And then I had the snow leopards brought to the habitat and briefly debated whether these guys really belonged in the big cat section of my zoo, seeing as they're just tiny little fellas. Whether they belonged or not though, I had already set up the habitat and I wasn't going back now. So I gave them water and added some coolers to the habitat, after which I changed all the terrain to snow and gave them their enrichment items, before setting up a shelter in the back corner, much like I did the Gemsbach. I gave them bedding and changed the terrain under the shelter to a mixture of sand and soil and pulled out the greenery to spread a couple of trees around, along with sinking some bushes into the shelter area to make it look more cozy. I added some bushes and stumps around before pulling out the rocks to make a cluster to copy around the habitat. By the way, at this point I had been saving clusters of rock and leaving them at the front of the zoo so that I can come back to copy them and use them later, which was a huge time saver. But back to the snow leopards. I added piles of rocks mostly around the water and to fill in empty corners. And after all the rocks were added, I put ivy along the barrier, added education speakers and donation bins, and this habitat was done. It was also at this point that I realized I hadn't added rocks to the Formosian black bear habitat. So I backtracked a little to right that wrong and sprinkled rocks around the water, barrier edge, and around the climbing structure. And now the Formosian black bear habitat was actually finished. <laughs> 
And unfortunately, there weren't a lot of guests making their way all the way to the snow leopard habitat. But I figured after I finished adding everything to this area, there would be more incentive to come this way. So I didn't wait long before jumping into making the Siberian tiger habitat. I made a really rough looking barrier out of wood and thick glass. Added a water area and had the tigers brought to the habitat. And the first thing I did when they got to the habitat was to check their genealogy to see if they had anything fun going on in there. After which I added their enrichment items, including a climbing structure and changed the terrain to snow. I started making a shelter, briefly getting distracted to give them another climbing structure before adding the supports and bedding to the shelter. And with that done, I pulled out the plants and added trees and bushes along with ivy along the barrier. I did quite a few rock clusters around the water and climbing structure, along with placing some in the corner of the habitat, and the Siberian tiger habitat was done. You may notice I didn't add education speakers or donation bins yet, and that's because I forgot to, and I spent like a year getting b-roll of all the different habitats before finally remembering and going back to add them. Speaking of adding things, I wanted a little bit more traffic around the shopping area by the camels, so I added a new exhibit animal. I made sure to use an animal that made sense going in this part of the zoo, and since it was sandwiched between two African animal habitats, I went with the Goliath frog. And while I was there, I decided to lower all the prices by a dollar, because I had seen a few guests complaining about stuff being too expensive. And unhappy guests won't give me as much money, and if I want my zoo to survive another 50 years, I need happy guests. But for the time being, my finances were all looking really green, which means I'm ready to get into making the last habitat for this video, which is going to be one you've seen like three times before. I'm making another cheetah habitat. Because this is the big cat area, and despite cheetahs barely qualifying, they are indeed big cats. I kept the barrier simple, opting to use a half dome shape with wood barriers and one-way glass. I put down a transformer and water treatment facility by the habitat and had the cheetahs added. And since this isn't my first cheetah habitat making rodeo, I only spent like 30 minutes making this habitat, not including the barrier though, because I had to redo the barrier like 10 times. And just for reference, because someone asked in the comments of one of my Planet Zoo videos, on average making a habitat takes me like an hour, but if it's a large habitat like the elephants are the camels, it can take me around two hours. It all kind of just depends on how large the habitat is. But I also just prefer making the smaller ones because I feel like they always come out the best in my opinion. But back to the cheetah habitat. I gave them a water source and pulled up the construction tab to make them a shelter. I used thatch for the roof and added bedding underneath before giving them their enrichment items. I used trees to cover the back barrier because it was rather janky and unsightly. I threw a couple bushes around and fixed the terrain to their liking before pulling out the rocks, which I kept rather sparse for this habitat, just adding a few clusters around the water and filling in the empty corners. And that was both the cheetah habitat and the big cat section of this zoo done. And you might notice it's almost year 42 and that means there's still eight years to go before we're done here. And the cheetahs were the last animal on my list to add in this 25 years. And this was a bit of an oops on my part. I should have spaced out the habitats more so that there wasn't a large chunk of time left at the end. However, I will say, with most of the fast breeding herd animals on contraceptives, I wasn't receiving constant maturation notifications, so I was actually quite enjoying letting the game run and just watching the animals. I actually spent quite a bit of time with the lions because I still wasn't over how cool it was to get the leucistic color. I collected matured babies and hired more vendors to work zone 2. I also added some of these education boards by benches so that my guest education score would be better. And one of the snow leopards faced through the glass and escaped the habitat somehow. And it's a good thing the zoo's making good money because all of those running guests are gonna want refunds. Escaped animals aside though, I finished adding the education boards and started placing coolers along the pass so that guests wouldn't be so hot. And now that all the habitats for this 25 years have been added, I was free to work on the zoo scenery. I went ahead and deleted all the trees that spawn in when you start a zoo in preparation to add my own. I used two different trees, both of which I can't pronounce the name of, but I basically used them to fill in any empty space between shops, habitats, and staff areas. And just as I was wrapping that up, my last Bengal tiger passed away in this tree, and I fully expected him to fall from the tree, and instead he just stayed up there. And I probably shouldn't have found it as funny as I did, but it was greatly amusing to me. 
I did need a new set of Bengal tigers though, so I went about doing that. And I specifically got this male because the zoo he was from was also selling white tigers when they were selling him. And I was really hoping that they were siblings and that he would have a parent who was leucistic. And I was actually happily surprised to see that both the female and the male had leucistic parents. I added a ludicrous amount of vending machines to the zoo, along with a ton more staff because some of the staff I currently had were having trouble keeping up with all the work. And by May of year 50, I had quite a nice inspector report. And pretty much the whole of year 50 went by without anything of note. Except for at the end when a Gemsbach and Pfal passed away on day 28. But other than that, year 50 passed over to year 51, and that was the end of this 25 years. So this is the third video in this four-part series where I spent 25 years building up this zoo, all leading to having a 100-year zoo. And let me just say, it was also the most challenging. It's also very delayed. I actually started working on it a couple days after I posted the 50-year video, but Planet Zoo servers kept crashing, and when that happened, it would lag my OBS and mess up my recordings. So I held off on recording while the issue was being solved, so sorry for the delay. There won't be that long of a wait between this one and the fourth and final one, though, I promise. Also, I did pick up some of the DLCs while they were on sale over the holidays. I got the Australian pack, the Aquatic pack, the Conservation pack, and the Twilight pack. There really wasn't any rhyme or reason to how I picked them, I just chose the ones I thought looked neat. But with all that said, let's get into it. We're gonna start with the fact that I forgot to mention that I now have leucistic Bengal tigers in my zoo, which is quite neat. I also spent some time renovating the camel habitat, because while checking out the new DLC animals, I had noticed that this horse was compatible with the bacterian camels. I know it's not just called horse, by the way. There's definitely a word in front of that, but I'm, I'm not trying to pronounce that word. That's just not happening. And since the camel habitat was way too big anyway, I decided to throw a herd of them in there to fill up the space a little more which meant making them a shelter and tweaking the train a little bit. And honestly, I don't want to dwell on these guys for too long because they don't stick around. And uh, no, I won't elaborate on that quite just yet, quite yet. But either way, I finished the habitat renovations and moved on to adding the next animal to the zoo, which just so happens to be one of my favorite animals, the okapi. And unfortunately, I don't have the footage of making the barrier, adding the water, or making the shelter because my game crashed and I unfortunately lost it. But the only real thing of note is that this is a walkthrough habitat, and because of that, I went ahead and made this shelter with one-way glass along the front. I fixed the train to their liking before pulling out some trees that I lined the back of the habitat with, making sure to cover the staff path with leaves because it amuses me to make the staff walk through it to get to the habitat. And I was really happy with how it was looking, but it got a hundred times better after I found this giant rhubarb plant. Just look at this thing. It's so big and fluffy and cool looking and it takes up just enough space to hide all the unsightly spots in a habitat. Honestly, this plant alone was worth buying the DLCs for. Also, I crashed again. And when I hopped back on to finish the habitat by adding the education speakers and donation bins, I played for all of a minute before I once again crashed. And this is where I decided to, uh, to wait for the Planet Zoo server issue to be sorted before continuing the recording. After which, I picked up where I had left off and added the education speakers and donation bins to the habitat. I also realized that I hadn't added any rocks yet to this habitat, and so for the finishing touches I added a few clusters around. But with that sorted, this habitat was finished. I spent some time before starting the next habitat collecting matured animals and moving stressed out flamingos to this really specific spot so that their stress would go down. Also, this is where the issues with the horses started. Also, also, I remembered choosing this location for the zoo because it didn't rain here, or at least I thought it didn't. But it rains like two more times after this and then doesn't happen again. I'm not really sure why that happened, but unexpected rain aside, one of the horses had a baby which I thought was ridiculously cute. I waited for the rain to stop and got to making the path that will lead to the next habitat, which is going to be for the gharial. I set up a null barrier to mark out how I wanted the habitat to look, and after I got something I liked the look of, I added the gharial in. I made the back and side walls of the habitat out of rock before starting to sculpt out the swimming area. And I really didn't like the look of my first attempt, so I went back in with the rough and train tool. And I wasn't entirely happy with how it looked, but I was happy enough to move on to the next step, which was to place a fence barrier along the front of the habitat. And with the fence in place, I went back with more rocks to finish the barrier. I also messed around with the water quite a bit more until I got something I was actually happy with, which took a hot minute, but eventually I got a result I deemed satisfactory and moved on to adding moss rocks along the barrier for some variation in color. Not that it really mattered, because after that was done, I covered most of it with trees anyway. 
I think the few mossy rocks that you can see poking through added a nice touch though. And then I moved on to arguably the most important part of this habitat, the water. It takes up such a large chunk of the enclosure that I wanted it to look nice and be full of greenery. So I started with adding blue lotus plants before moving on to adding the underwater plants, along with a sparse amount of cattail and common reeds to make the outer edge of the water look more busy. I also decided that I had been too sparse with the blue lotus plants and so I added a fair few more, along with some common water lilies to add more variation, after which I added the enrichment items and fixed the terrain. I added some rocks, threw down the education speakers and donation bins, and this habitat was done. I then let the game run for about three years. Also, this was really the only way for me to let time pass in this game. My zoo has outgrown my computer's capabilities by just a little bit, and so if I open tabs and build stuff while the game is unpaused, I lag. The lag isn't too bad, but it wouldn't make for very good footage, so I spend a chunk of time in between building to maintain the zoo. Not to mention the constant notifications going on in the top left. None of it's particularly interesting though, so I probably won't mention too much of the in-between unless something interesting actually happens. Like how the Okapis had a really cute but really angry baby. Also, I placed more feeding stations and removed some of the feeding enrichment items in the camel habitat. Because I remembered when I was having issues with the flamingos and peafowls being hungry despite just being fed that that had helped quite a bit. Also, one of the Siberian tigers passed away, and I'm only mentioning it because it was specifically a Siberian tiger that passed. And when I went to put another tiger in there, I accidentally added a Bengal tiger instead of a Siberian tiger, and I completely missed my mistake and instead moved on to adding the next shopping area. And just as I was finishing it up, I got the notification that she had arrived at the zoo. And after I added all the stuff in the area to the proper work zone, I zoomed out to see how the larger zoo was looking, and I got the notification that Brody had died. And I was so disappointed, because up until this point, I had never had an animal die from anything other than old age. But the show must go on, and I needed to pick me up, so I decided to work on the next habitat, which was going to be for the giant pandas. And it was going to slot in neatly next to the new shopping area. So I set up a wooden barrier with glass for the viewing areas and added the pandas. After which, I gave them a water area and added some climbing structures to the habitat, which also doubled as their shelter. I placed their feeding platforms on top of the climbing structures because I've never done that before and I thought it would be cute. After which I added the bedding and the rest of the enrichment items before pulling up the nature tab and giving them some cherry blossoms and Himalayan birch trees, along with covering the back of the habitat with bamboo and adding a healthy amount of rocks before going through and adding a variety of plants and finishing it off with fixing the train. And that was this habitat finished. I didn't get to enjoy it for too long though because I got a notification for an escaped animal and this little fiend was the culprit. He doesn't look very escaped, but technically, because I didn't make sure the null barrier was behind the fence, he had crossed the imaginary barrier. So I fixed that really quick and was able to go back to the pandas. Also, I forgot to add education speakers and donation bins for quite a while, but I did remember eventually. I also had to add coolers to the habitat because the pandas were not happy with the temperature. But after that, the habitat was actually finished. And while I was recording the pandas eating, I got another escape notification. I wasn't quite sure which of the four pandas escaped, because they all looked rather confined to the habitat as far as I could tell, but upon closer inspection, this dude was definitely outside of the habitat. Yeah, not really, that's a joke. He was definitely not outside of the habitat. He's very much so in the habitat. And so I went back to watching the pandas eating, and it stopped telling me he escaped after a second. And despite being a little bitter that the people who ran were going to want refunds, watching the pandas eat made it just a little better. Until I had another glass phasing escape. Luckily enough though, no one seemed overly concerned with this little guy running around. He did eventually get caught though and he dropped like a lead balloon. There were also still issues with the camel habitat and so I went back through and deleted some more of the enrichment items to try and solve the issue. After which I went to check on one of the Siberian tigers because they had poor welfare, which was due to a lack of hydration. I moved her along the water edge a couple times and she eventually drank some water. I'm not really sure why she was being so picky about the spot she would drink from, but no harm, no foul, I guess. It wasn't long before I found myself back at the camel habitat, once again with some very hungry horses. And I'm pretty sure the issue I was having with these guys was due to lack. Because if you'll notice, the keeper is cleaning the habitat, which in my experience, they only do after feeding the animals. So either this guy didn't go and eat, or the game just isn't registering that they were fed. I'm not sure what the issue was really, I really should have just removed them at this point, but alas, I didn't. And so we move on to the next habitat, which is for the red deer, 
Not really an animal I'd walk by in a zoo and be blown away to see, but they're cute and so I'm adding them. Starting with making the path to where this habitat will be, I made them a pretty simple wood with glass at the front barrier and then set up the staff building for a new work zone nearby. And then I had all the deer brought to the habitat where I set up the enrichment items and added the water, after which I gave them a shelter using the barrier walls. I started with adding a few trees before placing some cattail reeds around the water and a lot of common grape vines along the inside of the barrier, finishing off the greenery with placing down a fair few flowers and bushes. And the train was very simple because these guys were more than happy with a habitat full of just grass. I added the education speakers and donation bins along with some rocks and this habitat was done. Uh, but on a sad note, two of the horses in the camel habitat died of starvation as they were being fed, which is a little ironic. And maybe I'm huffing copium a little bit, but, but, the tiger dying was totally my fault. These guys dying? Not my fault. I'm not taking responsibility for these ones. It was lag that killed them, and that is my final statement on the matter. No, but all jokes aside though, I was so disappointed to have another animal die from a way that wasn't just old age. And I'm actually not sure why it happened, or how it could have been prevented. But either way, I moved on, and so did King, but at least he died of old age. I set up a memorial plaque on the barrier, which I haven't really been keeping up with doing for all the other animals, but since I actually named him, I figured I would hang up the plaque. And after all that was done, I wanted to move on to the next habitat. First though, I wanted to set up this ride. And no joke, it took me at least 30 minutes to get this thing working. This was my first time adding one of these rides to a zoo and it fried my brain for some reason. But overall, it was a nice addition to this segment of the zoo. My plan was to make the hippopotamus habitat next, but when I went to the market to get some, they were in rather short supply. So instead I started working on the Indian elephant habitat. I started with making a barrier out of brick and putting thick glass where I wanted the viewing areas to be. After which I set up the water area and had the elephants brought to the habitat. And for the briefest of seconds, I considered not using the cherry blossom trees, but then I came to my senses and scattered a few of them around. I did want green in my greenery though, so after a second of poking around through all my options, I found this fig tree that I really liked the look of. It was the perfect color of green to pair with the pink cherry blossoms. I sprinkled around some other smaller plants before switching my focus to the water because it was looking rather plain. I started with adding rocks in and around the water before pulling out the greenery again and adding in whatever I felt made the area look more lively, finishing it off with adding rocks along the edge where the water meets the barrier. And now that the water was done, it was time to finish the rest of the habitat. I started with adding all the enrichment items and making them a shelter, after which I worked on the terrain, added more rocks, and finished it off with placing down the education speakers and donation bins. While I was letting the game run, I got another notification for the tigers being dehydrated, and so I went ahead and placed a water pipe into their habitat, which thankfully worked to solve the issue, and I didn't have any other issues with the tigers after this. I also had to refill the lion habitat after all of them had passed away. Also, after the panda's like third attempt, they were finally going to have a baby. I had a brief debacle with the elephants trying to escape that I resolved by changing the thick glass to brick with glass instead. Or at least I thought I had solved it. And it wasn't until a short while later that another wall got broken down and I realized that I didn't need to change it, I just needed to increase the height. Also, the baby panda was born and I was rather amused by how chunky his little face was. But with all that said and done, it was time for the next habitat, which was actually an animal that I didn't plan on adding to this zoo, but someone commented in the last video and I agreed that it was only right that I add Nile monitors to this zoo. Before I could do that though, I needed to take a trip back to the first zoo and say hello to Bert, before going over to the baby overflow area and picking up two of her children. I did think about maybe taking Bert to the new zoo, but I decided against it because she would for sure pass away before I finished it. And to be honest, I don't want to see that happen. So instead, we're relocating two of her children to carry on her name. But after I was done with that, I made my way back to the zoo that I'm currently working on and started working on the area for the Nile monitors. Starting with the null barrier before pulling out the fence that I used to make the Nile monitor habitat in my first zoo. And after a short while, the fence was for the most part finished, excluding this small hole in this side that's going to get covered with a bush or something. After the barrier was set up, I bought another Nile monitor but I didn't have them brought to the habitat just yet because Bert's babies still had two years before they were matured and I didn't want him just sitting there aging. I did have the other two brought to the habitat though and was rather amused with watching them scuttle around in the long grass. I started with making the watering area and setting up all the enrichment before adding some trees to the habitat and some blue lotus plants to the water 
I threw around a sparse amount of bushes along with some ferns and leaf litter before adding more greenery in and around the water area and fixing the train, along with making the path along the back of the habitat staff only so that the guests would stay at the front where the good viewing spots were. I also added the education speakers and donation bins before I could forget, and with all that in place, it was rock time. And there were a lot of rocks to add, mostly focused around the water, but after I was done with the rocks, this habitat was finished. It was a little funny to watch these two small lizards have so much room to roam, but it also made me happy because I just think these stupid lizards are rather neat. This habitat was done though, and it was time for some more in-between habitat building zoo maintenance, which in this case entailed restocking the reptile house. Oh, and I also realized that the mechanic research tab had new things from the DLCs that I didn't have going, so I started those. And I also went ahead and added the last Nile monitor to the habitat. Also, since the left side of the zoo was finished, I decorated it with some trees to finish it up a little bit more. And with all that done, it was time to start the next habitat, which was meant to go behind the red deer habitat. But I think I built the ride track too low because I couldn't place a path underneath it. And so instead, I made the hippopotamus habitat next to the Indian elephant habitat. And I was a little stumped as to how I wanted to make this habitat. But in the end, I decided to sink the terrain a little bit and use a null barrier. I added the water and then had the hippos brought to the habitat. After which I set my sights on figuring out the barrier situation. My initial thought was to use rocks to line the edge and act as the barrier. And I tried a couple different iterations of that and didn't really like any of them. So instead I used the steel mesh barrier for the habitat. I didn't think it was the best looking option, but it worked. Also while I was working on that, the first now monitor babies were born which I thought was pretty exciting. But back to the hippos. I went about making them a shelter and placing all their enrichment down before getting out the trees and adding a healthy amount, mostly around the back of the habitat. I threw common reeds along the edge of the water and added various other bushes and flowers to the habitat before pulling out the rocks. And at first I added rocks into the water to make it look less plain, but it took away a lot of the traversable area and so I took them all out. And now these guys live with some very plain looking water. But that didn't stop me from putting rocks everywhere else, even if it was just a touch sad to see such rockless water. But a couple education speakers and donation bins later and this habitat was done. And when I zoomed out to look at the zoo in its entirety, I was rather pleased with how it was shaping up. Also, while I was looking to see what the money flow for the zoo was looking like, I made a startling discovery. But I had plenty of animals in my animal storage that I just hadn't cleared out yet, and so I did just that and earned myself a chunk of money, so I really wasn't all that worried about it. I'll tell you what really wasn't helping the money issue though. Animals that are very much so not escaped, escaping. According to the game at least. I don't know what it is about this specific spot in the panda's habitat that does this, but it is very inconvenient. Especially when all the guests that run are going to one refunds. That aside though, the Nile monitors had more babies. And because the Nile monitors are the least problematic animal in the zoo, they are also now my favorite. And the snow leopards are now my least favorite. Even though he did do me the favor of turning around and phasing back into the habitat. All that aside though, it's time for another habitat, which is going to be for timber wolves. And when I was buying them, I got really confused because some of them were a different color, but it wouldn't tell me what the coat color was. And so out of curiosity, I bought the cheapest one. I set up a basic wood barrier with glass and had the wolves brought to the habitat. And I was waiting for the wolf with the odd coat color to be brought to the habitat because I was almost positive it was going to be just the same as the rest and that my game was just being funky, but she actually did have a different fur color. I don't know why it blanked out the coat color in the marketplace, but either way, she was rather neat looking. I made the shelter for this habitat, after which I gave them bedding and their enrichment items, added a water source, and moved on to the greenery. I kept the trees to the back of the habitat and changed the terrain to snow. These guys also howled really loud right into my ears. Rest in peace to my fellow headphone users. That's a joke, I'm gonna turn down the volume so you don't have to suffer like I did. I added some coolers to this habitat because the snow terrain just looks like rock if it's too warm and I wanted at least most of it to look like snow. With all that done though, I pulled the plants back out and threw down some bushes and a fair few flowers to add some color to the habitat. I added rocks in and around the water and scattered some in the greenery, but overall not too many because I didn't want to take up too much of the traversable area with rocks. I also realized that despite having added quite a few new animals, I hadn't been prompted to raise the zoo costs at all so far. Which I thought was weird because typically with every new habitat the zoo appeal goes up and you can charge more without guests being upset. But that hadn't happened and so I raised the price as much as I could without guests being too prickly about it. Also I did remember eventually to add education speakers and donation bins to the Timberwolves. After which I was ready to make the last habitat for this video. 
And then my game lagged, which lagged my OBS, and the footage of making the barrier was lost. Fortunately enough though, making the barrier is not the most riveting thing to watch, so no harm, no foul. Also, this habitat is for mandrills. It's a monkey. Typically not my favorite thing to build for. But when I was mapping out this zoo, I thought there at least needed to be one monkey our ape, and this was my pick. I added water to the front and made them a shelter, after which I placed down all their enrichment items, including climbing stuff. And this is where I would say that I pulled out the plants to add the greenery if I had the footage. But my stuff lagged again, and I didn't notice until I was almost done with the greenery, which was a little bit of a shame, but I wasn't done quite yet. There was still some decorating to do, and so I pulled out some bushes to cover the blank edge of the habitat before sinking some bushes into the rocks lining the front because I thought it added a nice look. There was also still plenty of rocks to place, so I copied a cluster and got to it. And when that was done, I fixed the train and that was it for this habitat. I do remember to add education speakers and donation bins at some point, by the way. Just not now. First, I worked on adding vending machines, benches, trash cans, and education boards along the paths I've added. And then I remembered to add the speakers and bins. Also, as time passed, the money thing was still a persistent issue, which I was mitigating by selling the animals that I could, but I needed a more reliable fix, and so I took to firing some of the staff that had low workloads. And I pretty much spent the rest of this 75 years trying to solve or at least slow down this issue. The second thing I tried after firing staff was to add a souvenir shop in another zoo entrance, where I thought there could be more foot traffic. I did make sure to fill the souvenir shop, by the way. I also turned contraceptives off for any of the animals that still had it on, which will do one of two things. One, it's going to cost me more money. Or two, I'll make more money by having more animals to sell. I didn't really wait to see if that actually worked before moving on to another solution. I tried raising the price of most shops by 50 cents. And it's worth mentioning, I think what caused this issue is that I trained all my staff to five stars. And you might think the easy solution would be to solve the root cause of my problem, and that I should just rework my staff so that they're not all five-star employees, so they don't want to be paid as much. And to you, I would say, think less, like me. Because instead of doing that, I simply fired more of them, which didn't help, before ultimately just lowering the difficulty of my game to easy mode. But I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. I really didn't want to change my game mode, but then one of the lions must have picked up on the snow leopard's glass phasing talent, and there were so many people running and each of them was going to want a refund. I even changed it to medium difficulty before just biting the bullet and setting it to easy. And even on easy difficulty, the issue wasn't completely fixed, but it was fixed enough. And not long after, the end of year 75 came around, which marks the end of this 25 year segment. So this is the fourth and final part in this four part series where I spent 25 years building up the zoo, all leading to having a 100 year zoo. I let it run for a year, by the way, so that I could see what my money situation would look like by the end of that time, and I was not disappointed. While it was slow, money was coming into my zoo, which made me very happy. Because I won't lie for a minute there, I wasn't sure if I'd make it to the 100 year mark with how much money I was losing last episode. But now I don't have to worry about it, which means I'm ready to make the first habitat of this video, which is going to be for the Springbok and the Thompson's Gazelle. I made a path along the back of the Timberwolf habitat and set up a barrier with some guest walkthrough doors. And after working out how I wanted the guest path to look, I added the gazelles in the spring box. I took a moment to appreciate how creepy the staff looked all gathered in front of the habitat before changing the terrain to short grass and making them a shelter with one-way glass, of course. I gave them bedding, toy and food enrichment, and a water source, after which I pulled out some trees to line the back wall of the habitat with. I added some common reeds around the water before throwing a variety of different bushes and flowers around the rest of the habitat. I kept most of the greenery to the back of the habitat though because I didn't want to block the guest's viewing area. But after that was done, I worked on the train. And this is going to sound a little ludicrous coming from me, but I didn't add too many rocks to this habitat because I didn't really think it was necessary. I put some in the water and a few scattered throughout the greenery, after which I reworked the barrier because I didn't like how it looked and so I rounded it and was a lot happier with the look. I re-added the guest path and placed down the education speakers and donation bins, along with some benches, trash cans, and a few keep quiet signs, and this habitat was done. Which leads into the first in-between habitat building period of this video. I spent a chunk of time just hanging out with the Nile monitors before getting up to more useful activities. I realized that I never fixed the terrain in the hippo habitat, and I'm not really sure how I forgot to do that, but better late than never, I suppose. 
I also set up some keep quiet signs in the Okapi habitat to keep their stress levels down. Other than that though, nothing of real note happened. I will say though, I remember why I initially put all the animals on contraceptives. Trying to keep up with the maturing babies before fights can break out is a hassle. And I kinda wish habitats had a population control option like the exhibits do, but they don't and honestly seeing all the babies running around again is worth having to break up the occasional fight. With all that done though, it was time for the next habitat, which is one I've been eagerly awaiting. This habitat is going to house the three types of lemurs, those being the ring-tailed lemur, the red ruffed lemur, and the black and white ruffed lemur. I started with setting up a wood barrier and connecting all the paths, after which I raised the barrier and changed the sidewalls to glass. Not for any functional reason, mind you, just for the aesthetic. And then I told the keepers to start bringing the lemurs to the habitat. After most of them had arrived, I pulled out the climbing structures so that I could shape the rest of the habitat around these. I also used one of the bigger climbing structures so that it could double as the shelter for these guys. Just to be extra though, I did scatter around some of the smaller climbing pieces before adding bedding underneath that along with the rest of their enrichment items. I gave them a water source and pulled out the greenery to start decorating. I started with the trees before adding some blue lotus plants to the water and scattering a few bushes around. These guys also like the giant rhubarb plant, and so I took the opportunity to add those. And then I got really distracted by how goofy the ring-tailed lemur looked while sitting. I mean, that just doesn't look comfortable. What a nasty little freak. I've never seen a creature look so stressed out while sitting. Goofy lemur aside, though, I worked on the terrain next before pulling out and adding the rocks to this habitat. After which I added education speakers, donation bins, benches, trash cans, and quiet signs, and this habitat was finished. I actually didn't wait the typical two to three years before jumping into the next habitat, mainly because I was really excited to add some red pandas to my zoo. I set up a half dome shape and made a null barrier around that before adding the red pandas in. And after the red pandas were in, I decided to change the barrier to wood with one-way glass at the front, which I then made climb proof and gave them a water source. I gave them all their enrichment items before pulling out some trees to line the back of the habitat with. After which I added some Himalayan birch trees and added some various other greenery around along with decorating the water. And after all the greenery was added, I placed some coolers down and made them a shelter. I fixed the terrain, added education speakers, donation bins, and added some rocks around, and this habitat was done. And with the red pandas finished, it was time for some in-between habitat building zoo stuff. There were actually a handful of things I got up to in this time. I started with replenishing the reptile house, after which one of the lemurs had a baby, which I thought was very cute. And then a true tragedy took place when one of Bert's babies passed away, from old age, I'd like to point out. So I set up the plaque on a bench outside the habitat. On a happier note though, the red pandas had some babies, and I named one of them something I thought was rather fitting. And while I was over by the red pandas, I also set up a keeper hut and a staff building because neither of those things were anywhere close to this area. And I could see that eventually becoming an issue, so unlike most things, I got ahead of the issue before it could really start. After which it was time to make another habitat, which is going to be for the Himalayan brown bear. I started with making a path that veers off of the main path and sinking the terrain for what is going to be this habitat, or for what I thought was going to be this habitat at least. But when the barrier gave me one too many problems, I deleted it all and took a much simpler approach and just made a rectangular habitat instead with wood barriers around and glass for the viewing areas. Also, while I was setting up this habitat, I took a second to pick up some matured babies and was pleasantly surprised to learn that I now had albino warthogs. But after that, I had the bears brought to the habitat and continued on. I made them a shelter similar to how I made the timber wolf shelter, gave them a water source and added all the enrichment and bedding. I changed the terrain to all snow and added coolers. Then I was distracted by another Nile monitor passing away, leaving only one adult Nile monitor in the habitat, which meant I was going to have to put a new generation in there soon. But not now. For now, it was time to pull out the greenery and decorate the Himalayan brown bear habitat, keeping most of the coverage to the back, along with adding ivy patches along the barrier and on some of the climbing structures. And then it was rock time. And I decided to use these ice rocks, which really didn't look all that great, if I'm being honest. And so I thought maybe adding snow rocks would help for some reason. It didn't. But I haven't used them before, and I wanted to, and so they stayed. I did mix in some normal tundra rocks, though, and it made it a little bit better. I played around with the rocks for quite some time before deeming them satisfactory. After which I added the education speakers and donation bins and messed around with the terrain just a little bit so that it wasn't all just snow and this habitat was done. Before jumping into making the next habitat, I set up the final shopping area for this zoo, 
And while working on that, tragically, the last Nile Monitor passed away. At least the last adult Nile Monitor. There were still plenty of babies slinking around. I set up the memorial on a bench outside the habitat alongside the other two, and set my sights on restocking my Nile Monitor supply. And I decided to add this boy to the habitat because he had a hundreds across all categories, which is truly fitting for Bert's legacy. I had him brought to the habitat and named him Reuben, like after the sandwich, which I only know from the alien from Lilo and Stitch who lives rent free in my head. Uh, but I technically didn't use the right spelling, but either way the name works. I also, for the first time of many, filled all 200 slots in my animal storage and had to clear it out. Also, I noticed that none of the guests were leaving this shop area, so I connected it to a second spot, which seemed to fix the issue. And then I was on to making the next habitat, which is going to be for both Aardvarks and the Aldabra giant tortoise. I played around with the barrier quite a bit before getting whatever this shape is and deciding that it was good enough. I collected an albino aardvark and some tortoises I had sitting in my rewards tab, after which I had them brought to the habitat. I started with adding some animal burrows and a shelter to the habitat, after which I added the enrichment and gave them a water source. And with all that added, it was time to spruce up the habitat with some greenery. I threw around some trees before adding some blue lotus plants to the water, after which I changed the terrain to short grass, and continued on with adding various other plants and bushes which to my absolute excitement also included one of my new favorite pieces of greenery, the giant rhubarb plant. And I finished off the greenery by sprinkling some leaf litter around the edge of bushes, after which it was time for rocks, which I was also very sparing with in this habitat, leaving most of the rock clusters around the edge. Except for the large rock clusters I used to incorporate the animal burrows better into the surrounding habitat, which I think came out looking rather neat. I added the education speakers and donation bins along with some benches and trash cans before finishing the habitat by fixing the train to both the tortoise and the aardvark's liking, which was kind of a delicate balance, but I eventually made it happen. But while I was busy finding balance between the aardvarks and tortoises, a lot of the camels had passed away, and while I was purchasing a new male, I saw this funky dude. And while I typically don't like buying the color variations, I figured the chance of me naturally getting this were pretty low, and I really wanted it. So I went ahead and bought him, and after seeing just how cool he looked, I had no regrets. But right after buying him, while I was collecting some matured babies, I was pleasantly surprised to find out that I now had albino springbok. Apparently both her parents had parents that were albino, and I just hadn't checked before this. But other than that, nothing too interesting happened in this in-between time. I just continued collecting maturing babies and replenishing habitats as need be. And it was now time to add another funky reptile to the zoo. And what I mean by that is that we're making a habitat for some Komodo dragons. Starting with setting up a wood and glass round barrier and having them brought to the habitat. I made them a shelter with the front section open so that I didn't block any of the viewing area. After which I added bedding, enrichment items, and a water source to the habitat. I pulled out the greenery and started with decorating around the water before scattering a couple trees around. And placed a few bushes around the base of the trees before pulling out my second favorite plant, flowers. I love these flowers. They come in so many colors and are a great way to brighten up the greenery without adding big plants and taking up traversable area and impairing the visibility of the animals. The flowers were the last bit of greenery that I added before pulling out some rocks, which I kept mostly around the water with the exception of a rock or two placed in the greenery, after which I added the education speakers and donation bins and this habitat was done. I wasn't really spending too much time in between habitat building at this point by the way, because I wanted to leave enough time at the end to finish all the decorations, but possibly the cutest camel of all time was born in that short time, and I was just a little obsessed. I was going to change his name, but I actually thought it was rather charming, so I left it. Other than that though, nothing too interesting happened. And now it's time for the next habitat, which is going to be for some spotted hyenas. This habitat came out probably one of the funnest shapes I made a habitat yet. And after the barrier was set up, I added a water source and had the hyenas brought to the habitat. I added the enrichment items, and then made them probably one of my most favorite shelters I've made so far. After which I gave them bedding and pulled out the trees, of which I only added two, before decorating the water and adding other greenery in the form of bushes and my beloved flowers around the trees, and in various patches throughout the habitat. And then it was rock time. I started with adding rocks in and around the water before shifting gears a bit and reworking the train after which I had to extend the habitat because I made it too small. And after all that was done, I added a few more clusters of rocks. I added education speakers and donation bins, and this habitat was done. In the brief time I spent in between this habitat and the last, I collected a leucistic ostrich, 
The Heinous had some really cute goblin children. Also, Vanessa the Timber Wolf died. And seeing as she was my favorite timber wolf, I set up a memorial on a barrier for her. I went to check on the aardvarks and tortoises, only to see that they had been overrun with tortoise babies. I didn't really have a solution for that though, so I just kind of left it in hopes that it would work itself out. And then probably one of the most exciting things ever happened. My grizzly bears had an albino baby, which was very exciting because I've had albino ostriches and warthogs before, but not an albino bear, so that was completely new for me. All the excitement aside though, it was time to make the last habitat of the zoo, which is going to be for the Nyala. I made a path along the back of the shop area and set up a barrier using one-way glass and null barriers before having them brought to the habitat. After which I lined the back of the habitat with a ludicrous amount of trees. And it's not the first time I've done that. However, it is the first time I've done it and just used null barriers. Typically I would make the barrier wood even if I was gonna be covering it up. And you'll see how well that went for me in just a little bit. For now though, I gave them a water source and made them a shelter. I added the bedding and gave them their enrichment items before pulling out the greenery once again and decorating the water, after which I placed a few trees around, and then it was rock time. And seeing as I had been sparse with the rocks in most of the other habitats, I took the opportunity to add as many as I could in this habitat. The rocks were still mostly focused around the front of the habitat and around the water, but I was still pleasantly happy with the amount I was able to add. I worked on the train, after which I added the education speakers and donation bins, and this habitat was finished. And while I was watching the rest of the Nyala being brought to the habitat, this happened. Yeah, my belief that if I just added enough trees, they wouldn't be able to escape was very wrong. So I changed the null barrier to wood while I waited for one of the vets to capture her. And after she was brought back to the habitat, she looked rather smug about making me feel like an idiot. However, smug Nyala aside, now that all the habitats had been added, it was time for decorations. I started with adding benches and bins along the paths that didn't have any yet. After which I started decorating the outside of the zoo along the back of the red deer habitat with trees. I didn't decorate the new section, however, because I still needed to add walls to all the staff buildings and shops. And so I got to work on that, using the same wall slash ceiling combo that I used for the first part of the zoo. I also remembered to decorate the exhibits. And after a not so short amount of time, all the buildings were covered. Also, we got some Reuben babies. Which probably isn't the first batch that had been born, but it was the first one that I saw the notification for, and I'm pretty sure the whole clutch was albino. Which doesn't really mean anything, I just thought it was neat. I took to filling out the empty spaces in and around the zoo with trees, and pleasantly enough I was able to let the game run as I did this. Which definitely slowed down the process, having to stop and collect matured babies. But after two years I finished adding all the trees, and I was ready to add decorations to all the habitats. I started with adding these rainbow hyenas along the hyena habitat barrier. I added decorations around the Himalayan brown bear habitat, in the front of the timber wolf habitat, and I added a couple lemur walking signs both outside and in the lemur habitat. Gave the red pandas some statues. I gave the hippos this really judgmental looking hippo face. The Indian elephants and the gharial also got statues. I added panda posters and statues to the shopping area their habitat sits by after which I finished off my decorating with the red deer. And now that all the decorations were in place, I could get to the part of this video that I had been eagerly awaiting. Which is going to maybe sound a bit boring to you, but I wanted to record b-roll of all the habitats. Why, you might ask? Well, because I genuinely haven't looked at some of these habitats, other than short visits to collect babies and whatnot, since I made them. And I was thoroughly excited to revisit all of them. And that is exactly what I did. I also took the time to take the recordings in the order that I added them to the zoo. So enjoy the next couple of minutes of what were my favorite parts of that recording.
I would like to say, though, it took way longer than I thought it would. I figured it would only take maybe five years to record all of them, but by year 100, I still had like four habitats to go. And I think what made it take so long was that in between getting clips, I was collecting babies and managing the zoo, but also sometimes I would wait for the keepers to come through and clean the habitat so it would be nice and neat before recording. Either way though, year 100 came and passed over to year 101, and this 100 year zoo was done. Before I leave though, I will share my own little trick as to how I keep my animal storage empty every time I start a new zoo. And the answer isn't selling them. What I do is I have them all put into quarantine. Because if they're in quarantine, they're taken out of my animal storage. And to be honest, I'm only mentioning it because I'm kind of hoping someone has a better way of handling their animal storage in between zoos, and that they will share with me that information. But that'll be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did enjoy watching, maybe consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.